What's up, Croxing Clan members, Poker fans, and others who have on this video? I'm Sirs Croxing, and today I'm bringing you guys my first impressions on Scarlet Violet. Uh, I know it's been like out for like a week, but I, you know, you guys know me. I have an adult, a lot of adulting to do. I have a lot of stuff to do, a lot of stuff to plan, a lot of things to do. So I'm a little bit behind in terms of like how far I'm into the game. And I figured this would be like a good stopping point for me for me to make this video. I'm cutting this video into specific parts. You can obviously click in the description. It'll tell you exactly which one. If you want to see my thoughts on a specific topic, well, you can obviously go down there in the links and it'll guide you to that part of the video. Um, but I'm dividing into parts. So I'm talking about each individual stories in, in, in their own parts. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about my overall like feel of the game, how I'm liking the game, uh, the glitches and, and stuff and all that jazz. And just the final thoughts at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first story I'm going to talk about is the gym challenge. And the reason why I'm doing that is just because of the last one I've done. Uh, was surprised, I know, because I, and if you guys remembered back in my past videos, I would talk about, oh, well, I want to do Arvin's story the most. And then, like, the gym challenge. And then, like, and Team Star was going to be the lesser of the three. But I figured, while, actually, while playing the game, uh, I was just uh, doing some of Arvin's stuff, and then I just stumbled upon a Team Star base, and then after that I started the first gym challenge. So, this is the last one I'm doing, which is the most fresh on my mind. It's the most recent I've interacted with, so I just want to get this one out of the way and go from there. So, as far as the gym challenge stuff, I've only done two, like, I've done two of each, right? Uh, the two gym badges I've gotten are the Braceous one, um, which is the Grass Gym Leader, and then Kofu, which is the water gym leader. No, don't ask me why that specific order. I think it's just because the gym, the Braces gym was so close to the specific area I was while I was just walking around in the, in the, in the region and I just said, fuck it, this will be my first gym. Uh, and that's what I did. I ended up doing that one first and funny, you know, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of issues with the frame rate, but like I said, I'm gonna leave that till the end of the, the till that particular section. Um, so far, uh, I'm liking the differences between the gym leaders, at least the two that I've noticed, right? Because I haven't met all the other six gym leaders in the game, right? I liked the differences between the characters. Like, Bracius, when I first saw him, I was like, oh, when well, we first initially saw him about him, he's like, I obviously consider him a sadist because he's over here making, you know, some floors that are surrendering their life to him, and then he has a fucking whip, and I just feel like he's one of those, you know, sadists that just beats the crap out of whatever uh, partner they're with at the moment. Uh, and I still feel like he has this like ten sense of like doom and gloom mentality, or the I mean at least the way he portrays himself. Um, but I do like the 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 bustling of his city and the way he makes it out to be like this artistic freedom land where everybody can just come in and make whatever they want artistically, and it'll be praised and people can look at their art all over the fucking city. And then as for Kofu, I really liked Kofu's gym challenge, like. I, you know, one of the things I was talking about, I was really concerned about how the gym challenges are going to be. Like, oh, well, this one is, you know, the fetch quest with the Sun Flores, right? Which is the one that we're pushing a lot in the trailer. I was like, I hope to God that they're at least somewhat different and unique. Uh, and two gym badges in, I'm not, I'm not for sure going to be able to say, oh, they're all different and unique or whatever the fuck. But I like the complete switch of, like, between the two styles for these two gyms in particular. Um, I really like Kofu. I, I feel like it's a weird that... The way they did the gym, the, the gym test for that one was more like a, oh, do this because we need to do this, not because it's actually the gym test, which essentially you're like, you have to take a, his wallet to him because he goes to this other town, and which I like that. I like the fact that the gym leaders are not stagnant to their fucking gyms, um, which is one of the, the, the things I like about the gym challenge in this game in particular so far, right? I don't know what the rest of the gym leaders are gonna be like, but so far these two at least don't feel like they're stuck inside a fucking building, right? And this one actually had like a, a battle you had to do before you face them off, before you did the second gym test, because it was technically two. You take the wallet to Kofu, but then he has you do a different gym test for him, which is where you have to like bid, <laughs> become the highest bidder for a fucking item, which is cool. So I like the different dynamics and the fact that the gym leaders are not stagnant to one place. I hope to God that the rest of them uh, as soon as I start getting more involved into that in that space, they're more fleshed out with it. The only thing I want to bring up about the gym challenge right now, and the only issue I have so far, I don't really understand the point of Nimona being there, right? I mean, when they when they initially started throwing off all this fucking trailer shit, right, and and they were talking about all this stuff, Nimona, I thought she was gonna be prominent. I thought she was gonna be a fucking rival to you, 
but I haven't battled her since the start of the fucking game. So I really don't understand her entire purpose for being here. Again, I'm only two gyms in, but I don't understand the purpose of having her. Like, right? She just she's just randomly there when I get there. Um, like, cause with, I'm gonna talk about how the other two stories are are different, but the fact that you don't get communications with her until you're actually inside the fucking building defeats the point of having her as a fucking rival. Like, I feel like I have no connection with her anymore. So that's, I think, my only gripe with the gym challenge so far. I don't know if it gets better down the line with her in particular, uh, but at least for the gym leaders per se, I like the two that I've met so far, and I'm really hoping that the rest of them are as easily fleshed out or at least at least cool or decent. I'm not looking forward to meeting Iona because I'm going to be disappointed because she has no voice acting in the game. But we're not going to talk about that <laughs> right now. I, I can do another follow-up if you guys don't mind in the future. All right, moving on to the Team Star uh, storyline, which, like I said, I've done two of each for for this video in particular uh, before I tell them to make this video. I, so far, I have done... The fire and the dark fire or team star leaders. Uh, don't ask me why. Like I said, I'm just doing this by random. I just happened to be in a specific. I wasn't even going for the dark type dude until I stumbled upon the fucking base. Uh, I was initially going for the fighting one because I think that's one around the area I was at. But then I couldn't cross to it, so I just I was trying to make the long way around, and then I just stumbled upon the dark dude. I feel like this storyline is a little bit better than I was expecting it to be. I'm still upset. I was hoping for like something bigger with this type of storyline, but well, this is just the game in general. But this one, I mean, I'm upset that it's only five fucking places that you have to go to it. I think they were just trying to fit the quota of like just eight, all 18 types are represented in the fucking game. But I don't like that mentality. I think I wish there would have been more overlap. Like maybe the gym leader and the team star leader are like the same type for in the specific area and like. So it's like, oh, I'm trying to like grab people for Team Star uh, because I'm just as good as the gym leader in the town. But no, they just went this whole, oh, every all 18 types have to be covered. So five for this for this group in particular, and then five for the Titans. But we're gonna talk about Titans next. But I actually like the storyline they're going with. And the thing is, I, I think I kind of know who the final boss is gonna be of that area. No spoilers. I, I, I don't know anything about the actual game, you know, I don't know anything end game wise, but I think I know who the final boss is gonna be. But I like the fact that the principal of the school is involved in the storyline because he's trying to like save these students, but like he doesn't want to show that it's him. So he's like involved in everything. So like you meet him when you do the first raid that you do. And then he just sh he showed up again in the second one, but then like disappeared because he's trying to hide his identity and all this shit. I'm I'm really glad that they're involving the fucking principal because I thought he was just gonna be like a throwaway character, but he's actually like very connected to these students and he really wants them to flourish. So I'm actually enjoying this storyline more than I thought I was going to. Um, the only thing the only gripe I have is the fact that the two the two ones I've done so far Which is like I said the fire one and, and the dark one I'm gonna learn these names by the way in the future obviously because the more time you spend with characters the more you get You know connected to them I, I like their the fact that they're different right so like the fire chick Which is the one they showed off in all the fucking trailers uh, Melion or whatever the fuck her name is She's she's literally a hothead, right? So when you find out that you're going to raid their base, they're trying to keep her cool because she wants to beat your fucking ass. Whereas the dark gym, uh, the dark leader guy, he's actually all cool and collected. He's like the technological one and like very smart and very educated and all this other shit. So like he's he's like already prepared for you to come in. So he's just waiting for you to show up and like. But so I like the distinctions between at least two, these two characters. I'm waiting to see. The rest of them and how they are um in particular the fighting one because i really want to get to that one but the way the map is around like i don't think i can reach him from where i am right now but that's besides the point um so i like the distinction between things but what i don't like is they're the same fucking gimmick you you show up you battle a grunt in the front of whatever the fucking base is and then when you go in you you have to you choose your top three pokemon from your party that's the ones you go in with which is one of the things i was upset about before and it's the same fucking number of enemies you have to defeat and the same fucking time limit. Make it more restricted for fuck's sakes. Like, the battle at the end is fine, whatever. I, I'll talk about more about that, like, at the end of the section. But, like, give me more restrictions for fuck's sakes. These fucking guys are, are jokes, right? I, I come in and I, I literally pick my starter. 
and then two Pokemon that are effective against whatever the the place is, right? When I was doing the fire one, I had, you know, my Quaxley, and then I had, who was it? Qua yeah, the Quagsire, the new Quagsire form, and then, what, what the fuck was my other one? I think it was Wiglet? It was a water Pokemon, right? Um, I think it was Wiglet. I'm not, I'm trying to recall, but I think it was Wiglet. Um, so this, so, and then for the dark type gym leader, I have the, I'm not going to talk about spoilers, but, well, I've kind of talked to cute, a few about that. Anyways, the Quaxley evolution, which I don't remember the name of right now, the middle evolution, um, and then I had the Pommy evolution, and, uh, huh. I guess that is spoilers. Oh, and it's been a fucking week. The fucking Flamingo, um, which is the fighting type. So I went in with two fighting types and then my starter. So, like, it's 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 too easy. The let's go, you just do the, use the let's go feature and I do whatever the fuck they want. Give me a fucking challenge for this shit. Um, and then the final boss battle in that area is, is whatever. You get one uh, Pokemon from your type and then you gotta face the fucking car. Which I'm very interested to see how the fuck the thing's gonna work. Like, does the card change typings depending on some variation or some shit you need to do? I'm really curious about that thing because obviously you can have them. It's a fucking Pokemon. Uh, I already saw its pre-evolution somewhere on the fucking world. Um, I faced a trainer who had it. So, like, it's clearly a Pokemon you're supposed to have or you're able to get in your Pokedex. But, like, how does the type work? It's the same fucking Mon, but it has different signature moves depending on the type. So, like, how does that work? I'm really curious to see how that works. I, I, I want to cast the Mon itself. I'm assuming you get it as a reward for beating all the fucking uh, Team Star bases or whatever. I, I'm I'm gonna assume that's how you get it. But like outside of the the game the 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 challenge being so fucking pathetic and easy, I like the storyline in terms of plot. Um, and I'm really hoping to see how it develops. Granted, I only have three other to go because it's so small, but. I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far, which is surprising to me because I didn't expect to like it as much as I am. All right, final story we're gonna talk about is the Arvin storyline, which is the Titans, which is the one I was most hyped and excited for, and it's the first one I fucking did. As I mentioned in all the other videos where I was talking about trailers, the Titans storyline was the first one I was gonna do, and it's the first one I fucking did. Uh, I have done two and a half so far <laughs> because I got my ass booked in the third one, um, but I have done the cloth one which is, I think, the first one you're supposed to do. And then I did this fucking giant, like, stork battle. Um, with, so the flying titan. And then <laughs> I got fucking destroyed by Iron Threads, which is the Dawn fan uh, that was shown off in the trailers. Like, he fucking destroyed my ass. I was spamming recovery items and revives until I defeated the first fucking bar. And then he ran away. And I saw where he was. I'm like, fuck that shit. I need to come back. Um, I like this... This play. Like, this is difficult as fuck. Like, I like that part. Like, when I faced Cloth, by the, by then I had, like, level like, 13s, I think, is what around the level of scaling I was in that point. And, like, so I was, like, I was going in, and then, um, like, I defeated Cloth, and then he ran away, and then you get the initial... What I actually was hoping for, where you do the fetch quest, you find him again, and then he eats whatever the fucking herb is, and then he gets boosted power, and then... His HP recovers again. But then what they did different is that Arvin joins you in the second round. Um, which I really, really enjoy because I wanted him to have some like plot relevance in the fucking battle. So I like the fact that that's what was going on. And then you fight Cloth. He's much stronger. Um, he's faster, I think. Well, at least well, his ability I had activated or something. I don't fucking know. It was faster than it was before. Uh, I was, so that was fun, and then I, I, so I beat him, and then you get, like, a little bit of Arvin's backstory, um, you get a hint of why he's doing this journey, or why this is his treasure, and I'm loving it so far, I'm loving how they're handling, I like the, I just like Arvin, like, at the beginning of the fucking game, I thought he was an ass, cause, like, he just, he threw him right on in my face, like, oh, you take care of it, I don't wanna deal with it anymore, so I thought he was a dick, but, like, I think it's just like he it was too much of a burden for him so i'm but i'm really liking the way his story is going and i i think the titan storyline is the best one in general because i didn't mention this in the other part like i think well so far i haven't gotten a, any benefit from the gym challenge other than the fact that oh well your pokemon you're able to catch pokemon of higher levels that listen to you um i think that, that's the only benefit there 
And then the Team Star one is just you get access to more TMs to, to craft. But, like, the Titan storyline makes it to where your Maridon or Karidon actually gets better abilities. If you guys recall, back when I was talking about uh, the way these po the legendary Pokemon were supposed to get these, you know, the, the running and the swimming and the gliding and all that other fucking shit. I was really worried or curious how they were going to handle that. It's literally the Titan storyline. The more Titans you defeat, the more Maridon grows or Karidon, because it depends on Scarlet Violet or whatever the fuck. It, it, they actually grow. They get their ability. So right now, I have the boosting, right? When, so he runs faster. And then I have the swimming. So I like the fact that they're, the, the Titan actually gives you a benefit in terms of, like, in-game functionality. Because I don't really care for... I haven't really done too much TM crafting, first of all. And most of the Pokemon I'm capturing, I don't even fucking use. Like, well, there are some... There have been some that I'm switching in back. Like, I don't have the same team I did when I first started. I've been switching them back and forth. Like, I'm, I'm finally, like, trying to finalize a team. But, like, as of right now, I only have, like, two or three that I would actually keep the whole way. <laughs> and the rest are just swappable. <laughs> or, like, they're grinding. I'm trying to get, like, evolutions. So, like, the Pokedex expands or whatever the fuck. So, the Titan storyline is a benefit. Like, it helps me because it makes it easier to traverse this fucking world. And Arvin's story itself is actually solid. And I love the fact that he's doing all this stuff to basically revive a Pokemon of his. Spoilers. It may, I like the dude. I really like the dude. I like the reasoning he's doing this shit. And I'm really looking forward to just continuing this following. Like I said, I, I did two and a half of this one. And I got fucking bodied. And it's fucking hard. The stupid bird. I hate that fucking thing. It was beating my ass for like half the battle before I was able to like weaken it. I had to like... So, like, okay, the difference between the other storylines and this one is the fact that because it has such a huge health bar, you have to play it different. Like, I don't think most of the time, like, my super effective hits hasn't been doing as much damage as I would expect. So, I've mainly been, like, statusing and, like, like, stat lowering and shit. That, that's, so I like the fact that I have to, like, analyze myself um, and, like, strategize for the fucking time. Maybe that's just the way I'm playing the game differently. Maybe other people are just like, oh, one-shotting these fucking things. But for me, I like the fact that I have to strategize to beat these guys. Whereas the other guys is just, click, let's go, 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 go. And then, like, the fucking, it's, it's a fucking battle. Like, that's easy as fuck. I, I've done, I've been doing battling for years. So, I like the fact that it's different. I really enjoy the storyline. And I think it's probably going to be the first one I complete. But I'm gonna give it a break because, like I said, I got fucking destroyed by Iron Thread. <laughs> so unless, and I'm not dealing with the fucking dragon anytime soon. Hell no. Um, uh, what the fuck is the other one I'm missing? Because there's only five of them. Like that's one of the, the the negatives of this shit. Like I don't like the fact that there's only five Titans. I'm dealing. With. It's fucking bullshit. I want more. I like this storyline so much. Um, but like, so there's Iron Threads, which is Steel, and then there's the fucking dragon, which I there's no way in fucking hell I'm dealing with that shit anytime fucking soon. And I don't remember what the other one is. Because it was rock flying, steel, dragon. And I really don't remember what the last one is. It's not poison. I think it's ground. I think the last one is ground. But I'm not quite sure. Um, but regardless, like, I love the storyline to death. Like, it's, it's fucking amazing. Oh boy, this video is going way too long. I was hoping to do a lot more talks. So I think I'm just going to do the glitches and all that shit right now. And then do my final thoughts at the end. I don't want to go <laughs> too much in terms of everything else. But I'm going to be throwing screenshots and, uh, and footage in the middle of me talking right now. So you guys can see some of the glitches that I've been stumbling upon. Um, look, this fucking game isn't optimized for shit. <laughs> Which is weird to say. I didn't expect... The this is the, I, okay, I did not expect that a Pokemon game was ever going to be this fucking bad in terms of optimization. Like, look at this shit that's showing up on screen. Look at some of the crap I've been dealing with. This is fucking ridiculous. I have fucking evolutions happening, and the fucking original mod is on the side, as in like, hey, what's up? I'm still here. There's two of me. What's up? And like, all those other shits happening. I'm getting videos, or like, a, a footage of like NPCs clipping in and out of existence. I have fucking a, a fucking Tauros that's like coming through me like a fucking oh, it's just fucking stupid bullshit, man. I, there's so much fucking glitchy ass crap in this fucking game. Um, but <laughs> I, 
There's definitely more. I, I have, there's so many more, but um, I wasn't able to get it on camera. So like I've been taking screenshots and like video recordings from like the Switch. But some of these times I just get messed up where I don't catch it in time. And I'm like, ah, damn it. Um, but I'm, I'm, I want more, I want to see more of this shit. I haven't seen some of the worst ones out there. Like I've seen footage of like people posting on like YouTube shorts and on Twitter and shit like that. Of, like their fucking companions uh, going like 30 feet tall and they're trying to ride their, their Karida on. The, the, the model goes away. Like I've seen some crazy ass fucking shit in this game. Um, and like it's glitches go I have mountains disappearing out of nowhere and then popping back in I have no idea what the fuck is happening with this fucking game god damn it. okay um sorry about that at the end uh my bad <laughs> this is my final thoughts um I'm sorry the video is so long I, but I really wanted to give my full uh thoughts analysis on my first impressions of this game because like I know a lot of other people probably put their two cents out there and all that shit. But you guys know how I am. I don't like to just throw out something out for, for whatever sakes. I wanna at least give you guys like a full in-depth review. I mean, you guys know my videos are long anyways. But for me personally, this game, in spite of all its flaws, cause this fucking game is flawed as fuck. There's a lot of issues uh, in this game. In terms of like, uh, not not the, the core uh, gameplay loop, but just in like a mechanical sense, like this game is not optimized for shit. My final thoughts for this for this video for you guys for as of right now. This is one of the best Pokemon games I've ever played. Um, main titles uh, that I've ever played. Tr purely on the gameplay. Everything else is fucking ass. Like the gym challenge stuff, whatever. I mean, it's cool. So, for, I like the gym leaders and all that stuff so far. The Team Star stuff is way better than I thought it was going to be. And the Titan storyline is fucking gold. So as a game, it's bad. But as a Pokemon game, it's very fucking good. Like, I am so shocked and surprised how much fun I'm having on this game. In spite of all the flaws. Because, okay. I, um, I want to say this real quick because Doru, um, he's he was in my comments uh, the other day and I don't think this is a six dollar game in terms of like the way it's out right now I really think this game would have benefited from being in the oven at least another year I think if Game Freak had taken a little bit more time with this game this would have been much better because there's not like you guys know me and a lot of things that I, um, I've talked about in the past. So Game Freak should like outsource some shit. I've been seeing on Twitter recently that some of the fucking things in this game, some of the mechanics, were outsourced. There's developers that worked on this game that worked on other fucking things. Like there's a Xenoblade developer. There's fucking Smash developers. There's like literally developers from different Nintendo IPs. But the game is still this fucking bad. And it's not because they're not good at their job. Because if you've seen Xenoblade Chronicles recently, those fucking games are gorgeous. And uh, Smash Bros. is fucking goaded. And um, there was, what the fuck, there was another game. Pokemon Snap is fucking amazing. Like the, the new Pokemon Snap is fucking gorgeous uh, as a game. It's so fucking beautiful. Um, so there's a lot of different components here. And I don't think it's the the quality of people working on the game it's the amount of time they were given i don't think they should have released the game this early i really don't i am truly truly i do think this game is worth playing i just don't think it's optimized to be played right i know a lot of people have been saying recently too uh, i want to keep i'm keep adding shit to this but it's gonna be fucking long as fuck um, I've been seeing a lot of people saying that if you switch the memory from the SD card to the actual switch uh, memory It runs a little bit smoother. I haven't tried it um, I probably should have but I really don't feel like I need to um, like I'm having I'm able to enjoy myself regardless of all the fucking shit that's happening But like I feel like if you if you really Do play the game you're gonna have a good time, right? Um, and I this is not just me being a Pokemon fanboy or whatever Doruk. I know you're gonna comment some shit like that if you watch this video all the way through. I don't think it's a bad Pokemon game. It's a bad video game. 
in general. Like, I feel like this is the best Game Freak has ever done on a Pokemon game ever. Which is saying a lot, because Arceus came out. Arceus was a fucking godsend. But, I think my boy Game Freak was talking the Insane Game Freak. Not Game Freak, the company, because they, they don't even know who the fuck I am. But my favorite YouTuber, the Insane Game Freak, said it best. I think Arceus fucked them over scheduling-wise. Because I don't think, if, they, if Arceus hadn't been made, obviously we wouldn't have such a fucking amazing-ass game. I don't think this game would have came out the way it did. They didn't give themselves enough time to do this. Because this is way too big of an ambitious uh, title. Like, there's way too much in this fucking game. There's no way they were ever going to push this out as good as it is. Um, or as good as it could have been. With the time restraint they gave themselves. There's no fucking way. I feel like Game Freak needs to take a step back. Maybe, like, push on the Pokemon company. They're just like, dude, chill out. Because, like, Sword and Shield sold, like, fucking gangbusters. Arceus sold relatively well. I don't remember where the fuck I was. I was fucking interrupted by a fucking asshole. The point is, Game Freak needed more time. The, the whole team, the, the outsourced parts as well, needed more time with this game. I don't think they were able to make Scarlet and Violet um, as good as they, they could have been. I, I see so much potential in this game that was wasted because of the time constraints. So, for those of you guys who are still hesitant on getting the games, I don't blame you because a lot of the footage going around is that it's, there's just a fucking shit ton of mess everywhere. And there really is. These, these two games are not optimized at all. There's way too many things, way too many mistakes, way too many issues. But if you consider yourself a fan of Pokemon as a, as, as a whole, I think you're doing yourself a disservice not at least trying the games out. Because at their core, this gameplay loop is some of the best we've had in the series. Hands down. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to be a fanboy or none of that shit. You guys know how straight I've been with you guys anytime Pokemon, anything is related. Like, you guys remember how I was with X and Y, with, with uh, Sun and Moon, uh, Sword and Shield, all that shit. You guys know I'm always throwing you guys straight facts, how I feel and all that shit, okay? So you guys know that I'm not doing this shit for publicity's sake or none of that crap. I generally, generally think these games are worth buying as a Pokemon fan. As a gaming fan, no. No, 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 no. No, I don't think so. But if you're a really core Pokemon fan, these games are worth it. So if for some reason anything that I said to you guys resonates and you want to hear more we can do another video talking about specific points you guys want me to talk about um, I can go more in depth with certain stuff like the storylines if you guys want me to give more and more in-depth analysis to a specific storyline like anything you guys want me to talk about in terms of these games from my perspective I will gladly make another video for you guys but as of now I can say I'm having the most fun playing these games that I've had in a really long time because like I you guys remember I really liked Sword and Shield but they weren't that like crazy you know I think the last Pokemon game before these one that I've enjoyed as much as this would be Black and White 2 hands down I still think Black and White and Black and White 2 Gen 5 is still peak Pokemon but this is getting up there like if they are able to optimize this shit and improve on it i think whatever the next gameplay loop thing the next big major title come out might surpass every other pokemon game in existence no joke the way they did this game i can see a lot of hope for the future that i haven't felt in a really long time sword and shield gave me a little bit of a glimpse and arceus was a godsend like i said but as a core pokemon game this shit's legit so I'm going to leave it off there. Again, apologies for the long ass video. I'm going to try to trim it as much as I can. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are able to give your thoughts in the comments. Um, give me some feedback. What did you guys think? What do you guys want me to talk about? Like, is there anything particular you want me to say? Um, whatever it is, you leave it in the comments and I will talk to you guys about it. I might even do a fucking stream if you guys ask for it. Because I feel like there's too much to talk about, the, in this, about these games for a video like as of right now. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys had fun um, if you're enjoying the games let me know in the comments uh, what do you guys like about it what do you dislike about it 
Um, if you don't have the game, is there something that's keeping you from buying the games? Um, if you don't want the games, did anything that I said make you like think about it again? Um, like, I want to hear it all. So that's going to be it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Source Crossing, and I will see you guys in the future.